Leon Aaron is the director of Russian studies and resident scholar at American Enterprise Institute, the Putin, Putin Doctrine. What makes Vladimir Putin tick, and where are we right now when it comes to U.S.-Russian relations? Leon Aaron, good morning. Thanks for coming on. Good morning. It's a pleasure. So, uh, first of all, uh, what is what was your take on uh, the press conference, the Helsinki? Um, what, what's your take in general of, uh, of the president and Putin? Well, you know, it's almost, and I, and I was forced, um, obviously, um, that's what I pay, I'm paid for, to watch that entire press conference. And um, it's almost like um, you, you were in two different rooms or even two different biospheres. The first one concerned the, um, um, you know, strategic issues in U.S.-Russian yep. relations. Mm-hmm. Um, and in that room, you could sort of exhale um, because all those fears that, that had been brooded about, you know, uh, uh, Trump is going to give up on Syria, Trump is going to make deals on Ukraine, Trump is going to um, uh, talk to Putin about uh, a number of issues that are ha- have baked and make concessions that are yeah. detrimental to our, our uh, security. That did not happen. Uh, my, my, before the summit, I'd written a, a, on, on, on AI and, and the Hill um, publication, and I said, bottom line, do no harm. Because yeah. there's really no agenda. The state of the relationship between two countries is so bad. Uh, nothing nothing um, positive will come out of it, but at least do no harm. In that sense, I think it happened. Yeah. Now, the other room or the other biosphere was the, the washing of dirty you know, U.S. domestic linen in front of uh, not only international audience, yeah. Yeah. but you know, a few feet away from the man who domestically says the U.S. is your enemy. Right. So that was... The problem with the summit and and the the second the fallout from the second room of the second biosphere essentially buried um you know a fairly benign message from from the first one do you uh, uh do you uh, obviously when we're talking with our enemies that's a good thing communication is a good thing you agree with that and having putin come back to the united states especially with everything going on that's this president who here we are in the midst of all of the controversies over the last a press conference, and he announces, "Hey, I've invited him. He's coming to come into the United States." Yes, um, it, it, exactly right. I mean, there there are two parts to it. Yes, I I thought that since there had not been a U.S. Russian summit since 2010, uh, when when the place holding president uh, uh, Dmitry Medvedev came to sign a, uh, a Start Two treaty with Barack Obama in Washington, um, I thought it was it was you know. So long as you do no harm, you should talk. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, it's eight years since we talked, just to see where Putin is. Now, the other thing is, is very important. Um, every time a, a, Russian, uh, a, 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 a Russian or a Soviet, that was true of mm-hmm. all the way back to Stalin and Roosevelt in, 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 in Tehran and Yalta during World War II, every time a Russian or a Soviet leader sits down with the American president, and remember... No matter what they say, America is the country that that Russia always wanted to. Imi- I mean, not entirely, yep. Yep. but measured itself against. Mm-hmm. This is the only country that matters, ultimately, right? Right, right. So, so every time uh, a Russian or Soviet leader sits down with the leader of the free world, it's a huge domestic boost to a regime that really don't find particularly appealing, either domestically or in terms of its foreign policy. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a given. In other words, that we, we understand, and Putin got a huge boost already. Mm-hmm. Now, to come to the White House without, and I don't see any prospect, of an agreement that would significantly advance the national security interests of the United States, essentially you're letting Putin uh, eat his cake and have it too. Yeah, you know, yeah. He'll get a huge domestic uh, 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 benign Fall out from it, and he gives nothing away. Yeah. And believe me, given what Putin said this March, coming on to uh, you know during his election campaign, where he showed to the joint session of the Russian Parliament this v- virtually futuristic kind of Armageddon weapons uh, that he he claims Russia has invented to circumvent the U.S. missile defense. I, I don't see him signing any Armageddon. Right. Yeah. Incidentally, incidentally. It was little noticed that one of the things that he did say, uh, which I thought was revealing, 
uh, during the press conference. He said, we continue to believe that the U.S. missile defense, strategic missile, is dangerous. Um, and, and that means that so long as the U.S. holds on to the um, um, missile defense, Russia is not going to make any new uh, strategic arms reduction agreements. So, so Putin comes to the White House, gets all the pomp and circumstance, gets an immense political boost at home and on the international scene. Yep. And, and what does the U.S. get in, in exchange? Uh, probably uh, nothing. Uh, it certainly doesn't seem like yeah. much. No. Yeah. yeah. Uh, are you uncomfortable with the, with the president and Putin sitting down alone with just uh, translators present? Uh, well, listen, again, um, in that piece that was published in the Hill um, uh, Journal here in Washington, yeah. I said that this, these summits without an agenda present both opportunities and, and quite a few landmines. Um, you know, I don't, we don't know. Yeah. Now, if, if something toxic begins to ooze out of that black box uh, in the days and, and months to come, then, then yes, then the, the, there, there was some harm done. Mm-hmm. Um, so far, I, I don't see much of it, um, uh, apart from the media hype. Yeah, but, right. but anything is possible. So, so, again, it looks like the president has not noticed that it's a diplomatic protocol. Notice that they said nothing about Ukraine and Crimea. And in mm-hmm. the diplomatic protocol, that means there was no agreement whatsoever. Right, right. So, so, and, and actually, Putin did say that the U.S. said, you know, Trump insisted that the seizure of Crimea was illegitimate. That's a part of Ukrainian territory. And we think it's legitimate. Fine. So on some issues, it looks like nothing, nothing especially damaging has happened. Um, we'll have to wait and see if there's something else. Last, uh, we're talking with uh, Leon Aaron, director, Aaron uh, director of Russian Studies and resident scholar, American Enterprise Institute, certainly an expert in this field. Do you, um, uh, what is the long-term goal for, for Putin? Is it to bring... Russia back to the to the power that they once had as a, as the Soviet Union. Well, he he is not out to restore the Soviet Union. He right. is not going to reconquer, you know, all the republics uh, mm-hmm. of the Soviet Union or or move back to reconquer East or Central Europe. But my problem is, you know, going back to what we talked about, if you saddle this tiger, if you base your domestic political legitimacy uh, of your regime and your own popularity on this dual narrative there is a war with the united states and i'm protecting you and i and i intend to win this war you've got to um feed that tiger some fresh meat yeah and and you know some meat was fed in ukraine some meat has been fed in syria um and my concern is that unless putin gets off that tiger but then he has to find some other means of legitimizing himself domestically. Mm-hmm. I think we could expect some pretty sharp times and some tough times from him. Uh, Leon Aaron, thanks so much for taking the time. It's, uh, it's a pleasure having you on. And your, your knowledge of this issue is uh, just incredible. Thanks so much. Thank you.